Hello, and welcome to another edition of Truth is Making a Comeback. On today's episode, rioting across the nation has many wondering whether we're living in a state of lawlessness or a police state. Is there a way to solve this sticky problem between black and blue? Liberty Nation's legal affairs editor Scott Cosenza has some answers. Embedded in the background, but still there, is the COVID-19 crisis. Liberty Nation's Pennell Bird joins us to discuss the unholy duo of Bill Gates and Dr. Anthony Fauci and the future of forced vaccines. And in today's viewpoint, vanity, thy name is riot. I'll explain. All this and more on today's edition of Truth TV. Truth is making a comeback. Sometimes when you're caught up in chaos, you tend to ask the wrong questions. So here's one that just may help us get to the bottom of all this rioting in America. Is all this civil unrest really a racial problem or does the U.S. have a police problem? One wonders if videos of all the white and Hispanic folks hit the airways as much as the ones of Ahmed Arbery and George Floyd. Would we be staring at a police rather than a black crisis? Liberty Nation's legal affairs editor Scott Cosenza joins with some new questions and even better, some solutions. Welcome to True TV, Scott. Thank you, Lisa. All right, you keep shouting that we have a police problem, not a race problem. How so? Well, uh, the problems that we see that people are protesting about don't have anything to do with the way blacks and whites interact in society, but how police interact with all of us. All right, so um, you mentioned that there is a union problem here. What do you mean by that? What I mean is that the collective bargaining agreements that police officers uh, operate under are often very much in their favor when it comes to disciplinary processes and their uh, their bad acts. And these are often signed off on by uh, municipal leaders because of their uh, kind of in with the unions and the unions that represent these police officers bargain for uh, an easy process for them and we don't have a strong bargaining power on the other side the mayors and the county executives and so forth are, aren't upholding their end all right but what does this have to do with a guy putting his knee on a guy's throat for eight minutes or seven minutes uh, uh you know. Well, that officer, for instance, Lisa, had many prior complaints lodged against him. Now, I don't know if any of those were founded or not, but it's hard for any of us to know because oftentimes that bargaining uh, that I talked about includes the lack of any kind of meaningful civilian review, for instance, uh, or, or other consequences that would make a police officer who would be later inclined to have the no humanity, uh, really, to, for somebody's screams like that, uh, to be off the force a, a lot sooner than than they would have otherwise. Well, you mentioned in your story on LibertyNation.com about uh, the Parkland policeman getting his job back. Is this basically what you're talking about? That's exactly right, Lisa. And I talk about the uh, rehired with back pay quote. Uh, anybody searches on that term, you will see a, a staggering number of stories where police officers have engaged in all manner of misconduct. Uh, including just outright criminal conduct, but because the way the department handled their dismissal, they didn't dot all their I's and cross all the T's, uh, some kind of a, uh, basically a dispute resolution person ruled in their favor. And the courts would back up that ruling because of those union contracts. Again, this is a failure of government. All right, so in the case of the Parkland guy, he was fired and then hired? That's right, Lisa. The arbitrator ruled that because the county violated his due process rights under the contract in the way they fired him, that he was entitled to his job back with back pay. Now, that arbitrator didn't say he was a good cop or shouldn't have been fired, just that the way it was done under the terms of the contract, as the county agreed to, meant this result. So it was a failure in, in, in good contracting, I think, Lisa. All right, but you mentioned that labor unions are only part of the problem. Well, they are. There's uh, qualified immunity, and also I think the drug war is, is the big issue. Uh, we now have uh, as many prisoners in the United States, Lisa, as about the same as in Russia and China put together. Now, we think about what those of us who talk about freedom and, 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 and revere freedom think of those two regimes and how totalitarian they are, and they have a lot many more people 
uh, than we do, but we have the same number of prisoners. Well, why is that? That's new. That's not like we always had that since the 17 or 1800s. This is since the drug war has ramped up in the United States. And it's these drug war uh, efforts and the, the, the knocking down of our rights that, that it has gone hand in glove with those efforts that has led us to this incarceration society. And that's about interaction with the police, which is all negative. Scott, why hasn't anyone connected the dots on the left and right to these possible causes for police brutality? Well, they're uncomfortable for the policy prescriptions that they mandate uh, in both areas. So for, uh, for the right, um, they're often uncomfortable with liberalizing our drug laws, which is absolutely something that would be necessary in order to see that prison population decline. And on the left, you can imagine uh, all those unions that we talked about, those are uh, Democrat, uh, basically, uh, votes that we're talking about. These are the, the big cities where this is going on. You know, when was the last time a Republican was a mayor of Philadelphia or New York or, uh, you know, in That's control right. in Los Angeles? These are Democrat strongholds, and they often just work in lockstep with the police union because of the votes and the political power involved, Lisa. All right, so if you were to sum up two simple solutions to our police problem. Easy and simple aren't the same thing. So uh, let's recognize that when we talk about it. Um, I would say the first is that we have to, in every instance, try to, anytime somebody wants to pass a law that, that includes a criminal penalty or, or the opportunity for another interaction between the police and the citizenry, recognize that it could result in a death because of the way that tension works. Eric Garner uh, was killed because he was selling a cigarette uh, or, or alleged to have been selling cigarettes without paying the proper tax stamp. Uh, so that's the first one. Um, and, and the second one is, I would say that we need aggressive enforcement of federal civil rights laws against the police. We can't uh, count on uh, all the little towns uh, to do their you know, all the heavy lifting. And so for anybody who watches, there's a million YouTube videos, Lisa, there that will show you uh, cops shining lights in the cameras of citizen journalists, for instance, or people being detained for, for uh, recording the police, right? Those people should face federal, and I would say those people, I mean, those police officers, Lisa, should face federal prosecution for civil rights violations. And that'll put a quick end, I think, uh, to that kind of activity. All right, Scott, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Lisa. That's Scott D. Cosenza, legal affairs editor at LibertyNation.com. Go deeper on the topic discussed in this video. Head on over to one of these links here or go to our Liberty Nation Roku channel. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for Liberty. Truth is making a comeback. The issue of forced vaccinations is rapidly approaching without so much as a whimper. This assault on liberty in the name of public health is being led by the dynamic duo of self-appointed globalist health sage Bill Gates and his wingman, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Will Americans be staring down the barrel of a vaccination syringe, whether they like it or not? Liberty Nation's Penel Bird has written extensively on this topic and joins us today. Hi, Penel, and thanks so much for joining us on Truth TV. Hey, Lisa, great to be here. All right, you got this three-part series on LibertyNation.com about the Cape Crusaders, Bill Gates and Dr. Anthony Fauci. Let's start with a little background on the connection between the two men. I assume there is money involved. Oh, of course, there's always money involved. Back in 2010, um, Gates had Fauci head the leadership council for this initiative, Gates's initiative called the Healthy People 2020 Initiative, which was by this year, adults would be getting vaccinated just as often as children do. So there's no real precedent for that. None of us have been vaccinated as adults, um, but that was the plan. And Fauci led that leadership council and, he, and Gates has given lots of money to Fauci for in the terms of grants over the years. So these gentlemen go way back. All right, so there's a chilling segment in part two of your series where you talk about jabbing the planet on Gates command. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, Bill Gates has a plan to have every single person on the planet vaccinated uh, for the coronavirus, even though we have 
no vaccine yet. That in itself is, I think, a little untoward, if not crazy. Uh, he's banking on the idea that everyone is gonna need to get jabbed for something we haven't even created yet. And I would just say, there's never been a coronavirus vaccine ever. They've been trying to make one a successful vaccine for years, and yet somehow Bill Gates, who has no background in medicine, is not a scientist, is going to make us a perfect coronavirus vaccine within months. Well, personally, I'm hoping uh, there is no vaccine. And the, and the reason is, you know, I was talking to a friend earlier today, and she said, you know, I tend not to like to get those vaccinations. And uh, my mother, for instance, doesn't even believe in them. And uh, she said, uh, at the very least, I I'd like to wait, you know, a good five years before they start jabbing me. Yeah, I, look, you have to do safety trials. We do safety trials for everything. We do safety trials for every car that's made that we buy. We do safety, you know, there are safety trials for most drugs that uh, we buy on the, on, in the market. But the sa vaccine safety trials are barely done by big pharmaceutical. And as was proved a couple of years ago, they're not even being done by the federal government who said they would do them way back in the 80s. So they really need to be tested. They need to be safety tested before any of us take them. Uh, taking a title from Sade, you call Anthony Fauci a smooth political operator. A cheese Pinal, he looks like such a nice, harmless man. It, he, and Fauci is a smooth operator. He really is. Uh, thank you for that, for getting that reference. I love Sade back in the day. Look, Fauci is, he's got that thing, that winning quality. You like him. He's genial. He, he wanted to be your grandpa. You want to hang out with him on Christmas Day and, you know, eat pasta with him. My wife, who's Italian, was kind of bummed to, that it turned out that Fauci's a little more than meets the eye. Um, he has reversed himself time and again just in this year about wearing masks. He's went, said, yes, wear them. No, don't wear them. Quarantines are good. Last week he said quarantines are not going to be good. They're going to be more trouble. Uh, they're going to be more deadly than the, the quarantines themselves. So he um, has been all over the place. He even said, you know, you should not, handshakes are out of the question. But then he gave an interview where he said, you know, maybe if you're on Tinder and you want to have sex with a stranger, that's okay. So he's making it up as he goes along. Uh, do you really believe there is a serious threat to liberty in the form of medical tyranny uh, with, and that these two represent, you know, uh, a serious threat to Americans? I, I really believe that um, with everything I have in me. And that's why I wrote this article. Look, every one of us should have the ability to say yes or no to a medical procedure. Uh, that's part of the Nuremberg Code, which was established after World War II, which says that everyone needs to have their own volition and giving permission to, under, to have a, a medical procedure taken under them. So we have to worry that people are making decisions about our health. And Bill Gates' idea of health is that it comes from a needle. We know that good health comes from eating healthy, sanitary conditions, good sewage, um, living a healthy lifestyle. And maybe vaccines can play a part, but for, for these guys, Fauci and Gates, it's all about the vaccine. They don't wanna know about the possibilities of hydro hydroxychloroquine being helpful. They're all focused on this, on this remedy that they think is gonna fix everything for the entire world. A few final thoughts on this for us? I would just, ask that everyone open their eyes and open their ears and listen to opposing views. Um, what Liberty Nation does so brilliantly is provide other points of view that you don't typically get through a lot of mainstream media. Uh, you, you guys do an amazing job at opening people's eyes and ears to other possibilities. I want people, as you do, to make decisions for themselves we shouldn't have our decisions made for us by some billionaire somewhere. Yeah, well, it's really sad. The media has become one big monolithic voice, you know, um, it's yeah. too bad. 
Anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining us on Truth TV today. It was my great pleasure, Lisa. Thanks for having me. That's Liberty Nation's Pinnell Bird. Read Pinnell's fine expose on Liberty Nation. And thanks for joining us on Truth TV today. Truth is making a comeback. Truth is making a comeback. The surrealism of emerging from one crisis only to wake up and find another at your doorstep is beginning to set in on Americans, much like a Salvador Dali painting splattered on canvas. Mayhem and madness fill America's flat screens while the establishment media goes one inch deep on what's happening and why. But if past is prologue, these riots will culminate in little more than loud and angry voices resulting in self-defeat. The establishment media loves to quote Martin Luther King at such a time as this. Leftist scribes and pundits generally fall back on the infamous civil rights leader's statement, quote, a riot is the language of the unheard, unquote. Today's race rioters and the American Bolsheviks who join them in burning and looting are unable to comprehend that this was an observation by King, not guidance. How do we know this? Because King also said, quote, the limitations of riots' moral questions aside is that they cannot win and their participants know it. Hence, rioting is not revolutionary but reactionary because it invites defeat." Unquote. The ineffectuality of the riot was a common theme of Dr. King. In a 1966 interview, he doubled down on this refrain when he said, quote, "...riots are self-defeating and socially destructive." If the purpose of a riot is to effectuate change, King could find no evidence of it, and neither can we. One of the first race riots of the 20th century happened in Detroit in 1943. The fighting raged for three days, and 6,000 U.S. Army troops were brought in. To believe that things have changed for the better in Detroit since then is, well, not to be in touch with reality. Then there was Watts, the great race riot held in a predominantly black suburb of Los Angeles in 1965. It was big, it was bad, and it resulted in nothing. Today, Watts is still an area filled with poverty and a high crime rate, only now it is primarily Hispanic. All this civil unrest has led to the granddaddy of race rights in 1968. Rioting and looting swept like an Oklahoma dust storm through the cities of Baltimore, Chicago, and the District of Columbia, to name a few. The National Guard came out in full force. People were killed. Millions of dollars of property damage resulted. Once again, the rioting led to zip, not a nothing. There is mounting evidence that the desire for true racial justice is not the inspiration for the riots of 2020. Pilfering Rolex watches and cosmetics from a Sephora store do not lead to social justice. One must conclude that what began as a protest resulting from the death of George Floyd by a police officer in Minneapolis is rapidly morphing into an opportunity for radical socialists to engage in nothing more than a feel-good moment of vanity. But vanity, as French novelist George Sand once wrote, is the quicksand of reason. As such, conceit and a need for self-importance are what burns in the hearts of these people setting urban centers ablaze. And because this type of violence has never effectuated any long-term change of meaningful social value in race relations in America, we can recognize it as nothing more than an indulgence in vanity that will only result in making the situation worse. It is entirely possible, if not probable, that the civil unrest we are witnessing will result in more rather than fewer George Floyds. The riots will only serve to foment the bad blood between the black community and the men in blue. Once again, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. may have said it best. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And that's my viewpoint for today. Truth is making a comeback. And that's it for another edition of Truth TV. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember to hit LibertyNation.com early and often and subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our new Roku channel. Remember, liberty all the time and everywhere. Ready, set, go. Stay ahead of the curve with LibertyNation.com because we put the power of the press in your hands.
With one click, Liberty Nation, Liberty Nation delivers tomorrow's news. And remember, Liberty, today, all the time and everywhere. Liberty Nation connected the dots between a Chinese research bio lab and a wet market where COVID-19 was supposedly discovered two months before the MSA. We were first to alert you of a serious attack on gun rights in Virginia. LN honed in on the Biden Burisma scandal months before it hit the papers. We brought you exclusive interviews from the border. We're looking at people just rising up. Liberty Nation was on the ground in London. Trump rally in front of the American embassy. Bringing you on the scene reports about Brexit. LN reported that COVID-19 was more virulent but less deadly weeks before others. LibertyNation.com delivers tomorrow's news today with LNTV's Liberty Nation Radio, the Uprising and Rabbit Hole podcasts, and dozens of insightful original articles and a new Roku chat. Stay ahead of the curve with LibertyNation.com and get tomorrow's news today. LibertyNation.com Truth is making a comeback. Visit us at LibertyNation.com.